My name is Ola Hammarsten. I'm a professor and chief physician at clinical chemistry and responsible for the troponin clinic in Gothenburg, Sweden. This graph shows kinetics of troponin T and myoglobin during a week in rats following intramuscular injection of minced cardiac tissue to generate a defined onset of troponin T and myoglobin release. Compared to myoglobin, troponin T has a delayed clearance. Troponin T binds to thin filaments in the sarcomere, the machinery responsible for contraction in cardiomyocytes. Following cell damage, both myoglobin and troponin T are released. As troponin T binds to thin filaments, the washout of troponin T takes a while due to the trapping effect. For this reason, troponin T often remains elevated for weeks in patients with large myocardial infarctions. Troponin T is released following all forms of myocardial damage. The extent of ischemic damage following myocardial infarction and extent of residual perfusion through the damage can be highly variable. If the occluded vessel remains occluded, troponin T levels often reach a plateau within 10 hours followed by a slow decline, as shown in this study on patients with myocardial infarction and no reperfusion by Hugo Catus, the inventor of the troponin T analysis. It is important to note that if the myocardial infarction occurred days before admission, the patient may have a stable troponin T elevation during the hospital stay. At our hospital, 25% of patients with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction have less than 20% change in troponin T level during the first six hours. Therefore, in principle, a troponin T elevation that remains stable for three to six hours cannot exclude myocardial infarction. It is possible to follow the long-term troponin change a week or so after the emergency room visit, as we sometimes do on my troponin T clinic. 95% of patients with myocardial infarction that we have examined had a long-term troponin change over 400%. Long-term troponin can be used as an add-on to current clinical routines to exclude myocardial infarction. Here I present some local data on emergency room patients. The take-home messages are that myocardial infarction diagnosis is more frequent among patients with chest pain but do occur among patients with a main complaint of dyspnea, especially at old age. Myocardial infarction frequency is highly age and troponin T level dependent. Compared to age and troponin T level, the patient's sex is not very important. Finally, at the given troponin T level, the myocardial infarction frequency is not age dependent. The reason behind this fact can be found in this paper. In addition to myocardial infarction, other potentially life threatening conditions sometimes present with chest pain and dynamic troponin T elevations. Examples are pulmonary embolism, myocarditis, aortic dissection, and pneumothorax. As we can see in this survey of almost 80,000 patients with chest pain at our emergency ward, these conditions are less common. Other reasons for dynamic troponin T elevations are tachyarrhythmia, stroke, severe extortion, sepsis, and Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. In general, troponin T elevation in these conditions are more transient as seen in this study of marathon runners where troponin T levels return to normal within 24 hours. It is however important to note that these conditions can also induce ischemia and type 2 myocardial infarctions in susceptible hearts. In these cases the troponin T elevation will be more persistent. It is still unknown what causes stable troponin T elevations. Stable troponin T elevations are often seen in heart failure, left ventricular hypertrophy, and kidney disease. In rats, troponin T is cleared more slowly in the absence of kidney function. Impaired blood samples collected from an artery and renal vein, the concentration difference can be used to examine renal clearance of biomarkers in patients, as we have done here. Albumin is too large to pass through the glomerular membrane. Renal extraction index, and hence renal clearance of albumin, is therefore low. Creatinine has a free passage over the glomerular membrane and has a renal extraction index that is close to its maximal value. Renal clearance of a creatinine is therefore high. 
The extraction index of troponin T is close to the extraction index of creatinine, indicating a prominent renal clearance of troponin T. Troponin T measured with high sensitivity assays is for the most part a degradation product expected to have free passage over the glomerular membrane, explaining the high renal clearance of troponin T. Using kidney function or GFR adjusted troponin T levels, the troponin T test becomes slightly better at separating patients with and without myocardial infarction as indicated by a larger area under the curve in a rock plot. Everything else the same, troponin T levels are expected to be two times higher if the GFR is cut by half due to its high renal clearance. Stable troponin T elevations are also observed in old age and after chemotherapy. In stable patients without myocardial infarction at our hospital, the median troponin T change is 10% and the reference range of troponin T change is 50%. It is my experience that if troponin T levels change over 50%, it often has an explanation. Currently, the only indication for the troponin T test is suspected myocardial infarction or other acute cardiac damage. Symptoms that indicate that the chest pain patient has myocardial infarction should guide whom to test. There are five levels of troponin T that are of interest. If the patient present with a normal ECG and baseline troponin T is below 5 nanograms per liter, default should be to exclude without the need for further troponin T sampling. This is especially true if the onset of symptoms were over three hours ago. This is safe according to several well-done studies and one meta-analysis. At our emergency ward, the fraction with myocardial infarction is very low among patients with a baseline troponin T level below 5 nanograms per liter. If baseline troponin T levels is between 5 and 12 nanograms per liter and one hour change is below 3 nanograms per liter, myocardial infarction can be excluded. For instance, if baseline troponin T was 8 nanograms per liter and a later test is 10 nanograms per liter, according to well done studies, myocardial infarction can be excluded. At our emergency ward, 40% of all chest pain patients fall into these two default exclusion criteria. The studies where these exclusion criteria were developed and validated, over 15% had myocardial infarction before testing. At our emergency ward, only 5% of chest pain patients have myocardial infarction, likely making these exclusion algorithms even safer in our environment. If baseline troponin T is between 12 and 40 nanograms per liter, a three hour delta check should be used according to European recommendations. At our emergency ward, 40% of patients with baseline troponin T over 40 nanograms per liter have myocardial infarction. Higher levels of troponin T only marginally increases the risk of acute myocardial infarction at our emergency ward and in well done studies. In addition, irrespectively of the underlying cause, patients with troponin T above 40 nanograms per liter is a high risk group and only constitute 6% of our emergency patients with chest pain. The default should be to admit and follow the troponin T change in the hospital. If myocardial infarction is excluded, other reasons behind the troponin T elevation should be examined. At our emergency ward, patients with other troponin T levels or abnormal ECG account for 30% of all patients with chest pain. Finally, a word on the accepted cutoff for the troponin T analysis. In the absence of other clear signs of cardiac damage of ischemic origin, Myocardial infarction diagnosis should be restricted to patients that at some point had a troponin T level above 14 nanograms per liter. This is according to international guidelines. The cutoff of 14 nanograms per liter is based on troponin T levels in healthy. The troponin T levels among patients without myocardial infarction at our emergency ward is very different and highly age dependent. We use the moving window approach to calculate the 99th percentile as a function of age in emergency room patients without acute coronary syndrome. Among patients below 65 years of age, the 99th percentile remained steadily at 12 nanograms per liter with narrow confidence intervals.
Among these younger patients, troponin T levels above 14 nanograms per liter had a clear explanation like sepsis, electric shock and so forth in all cases. Among patients with a median age of 70 years, the 99th percentile was 14 nanograms per liter, with wide margins of error reflecting the large variation of troponin T levels in older emergency room patients. In most patients above 65 years of age, with troponin T levels above 14 nanograms per liter, no clear explanation to the troponin T elevation could be found. When we re-examined them at my troponin clinic, it is easy to understand that troponin T cutoffs is a highly debated subject.